In this session, we're going to have a quick sort of six, seven minute discussion on some of the tools uh, that can be used in, in quality management. And, and really those tools are divided into two categories. The first being tools to generate ideas or to find leads as to where problems might uh, occur. Uh, and, the, and the next group are tools to or organize data Pareto charts or flow charts, which give you a kind of a, a visual representation of where some potential problems might be. And then the last group is tools for identifying problems. So you can do a simple histogram or you can do a statistical process control chart, which is something that is often used as a, as a very formalized process and will become uh, the focus of a couple of the subsequent videos where we'll introduce the concept of statistical process control charts. There are several different ones and then work through some examples. So we, we won't spend a ton of time. We'll introduce the concept here once we talk about these other tools. But fundamentally, this is just a quick introduction to some of the tools that you might use in the process of quality management. So the first one is a check sheet, which is, you know, again, uh, this isn't uh, rocket science. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, but it's just a, a, an organized method for recording data. And I want to spend sort of less emphasis on the fact that there's a check sheet or, or whatever it is, and, and more on the fact that you collect data in a structured, systematic format so that you can then later use it. Uh, to evaluate where problems might occur. So this isn't about a check sheet so much uh, as it is about having a systematic approach to collecting data, to evaluating where you are on a, on a uh, quality perspective so that you can then apply other tools to investigate what's gone wrong. Scatter di diagrams are also very powerful and they can start to give you uh, kind of a preliminary visual sense of what's going on. So you can see productivity here and absenteeism here. As absenteeism goes up, productivity goes down. That one's not a surprise, but in some cases you'll have scatter diagrams which, uh, which don't have sort of a clear relationship. This one sort of clear, has a clear relationship, but if we had dots here and here and here and here, then there wouldn't be a relationship and you'd say, oh, these two aren't related. So, so scatter diagrams are about figuring out where, uh, where relationships exist. So, uh, or, or, or may exist. There's no causality relationship clear here, but uh, it is again, a powerful tool that can give you a quick uh, indication. Cause and effect diagrams are also called fishbone diagrams are, are, where you start looking for reasons that uh, that specific things will happen and and what you do here is you have kind of an outcome that you're concerned about and you have several things that could contribute to it and you simply highlight potential elements in materials potential elements in manpower methods and machinery so that it, this is kind of a brainstorming tool it isn't it isn't. It, it, it gives you something that you might then go back and look at with respect to a scatter plot. You might go record to see if you are right. So let's look at a quick example. So missed free throws in basketball. Uh, it could be uh, an equipment issue. The, the backboard isn't stable. The rim height is wrong. The rim size is wrong. The alignment is wrong. So those would be things that you could investigate. These ones, as I said, are a brainstorming approach uh, that, that allows you to sort of come up with a whole bunch of things that could be contributing to your process and then start to measure those to, or track those to see if, they're, uh, if those are the truth, right? So um, could be the shooter, training, practice, motivation, concentration. It could be the approach, hand position, follow through. So all this does is sort of provide you with a laundry list of things that could potentially be causing the error or the problems that are, that are occurring. 
the 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 next one is a Pareto chart, and a Pareto chart is a is a visual representation of the relative importance of specific. So it, these are data for one month. There are a, a there there are problem. These are measures of complaints in a, in a in a in a hotel. And what it can do is you could say, well, this one says. 54 uh, out of 70 of the uh, of the complaints were about room service. Well, that probably tells you that room service should be a primary focus. You know, three out of 70 were the mini bar, roughly 4%. Clearly, you want to have zero, but if you only have one thing to address this week, you'll address that. So a Pareto chart gives you a place to look for uh, for uh, uh, for emphasis in improving quality or in this case reducing complaints the the individual histograms show uh, bars show how important they are and the line is the cumulative percentage so 72% uh, uh, was for room service then 88% included room service and check-in and then 92 or 93 included pool hours, and it gets flatter. Again, it's these early ones that you want to spend the most time and attention on. Flowcharts can also be like those, uh, like those fishbone diagrams, where you sort of document the process that you're going through, which allows you to highlight where problems might occur. Physician schedules an MRI, patient taken there, signs in. You know, there could be problems that occur at, at various stages here. Uh, and this allows us to, uh, to identify where things might go off the rails. So very much like the, the fishbone diagram gives you a visual representation of the process so that you can highlight where things go wrong. Um, the last one that I'm going to do uh, with before I get to statistical process control is a simple histogram, a graph that looks at the frequency of uh, the frequency distribution of uh, of a variable, a quality variable. So here we could have repair time looks relatively normally distributed, and we could figure out how much of the time it's it's very low, but how much of the time it's very high. So again, a visual way to present data, which will help you if you have quality issues uh, to evaluate where those quality issues may be coming from and how commonly they are occurring. The last thing, and this is a, a, an important one, and I'll spend two more, uh, two or two or more more videos on statistical process control. This is probably the tool that gets the most emphasis in operations management course. It's the one I emphasize the most in my courses. I think it's important to know those other tools, how you might use them, but they are relatively uh, simple and intuitive. So spending a lot of time on them doesn't create a lot of value. Statistical process control uh, is a chart that allows you to track how you're doing within a set of acceptability limits. And we'll talk about calculating the acceptability limits in a different video, but you can see here that we have a target value. We have a lower control limit, which is the, le the lowest acceptable value, and an upper control limit, which is the highest acceptable value. What we want to, when we track performance, when we, when we draw samples over time, we want those points to be inside these limits. In fact, we want them to be as close to the target value line as, as it can be. What this does, and I've seen, I'll tell you, these get used all the time. I've used them when I was out in industry. Not long ago, I was in the office of the president of a major food processing company here in southwestern Ontario. And up on his wall in his office, he had six screens, five of them had statistical process control charts from various functions in their manufacturing facilities so that he watched in real time how they were doing and he understood 
how important quality and consistency were in reputation, uh, cost control, uh, building sales. And so it was something that he spent a lot of time uh, paying attention to. I was surprised to see them up uh, on, on, on the wall. Now, in this case here, we've got an occurrence of a sample that is outside the lower control limit. That is something we should be taking a look at. This one is outside the upper control limit. So these are sort of the, the earliest signs that things might be going wrong or that something has changed. And we look at these to say, what has changed? Which So it allows us not only to say how we're doing, but it allows us also then to say, what should we be looking for when we're doing a quality investigation? So you'll see in more detail in a subsequent vi video, but it uses statistics and control charts to tell when to take corrective action or to at least investigate. It drives process improvement. Uh, and it has four key steps, which we'll outline in another video later. Measure the process, so see what the process is doing, sample it. Uh, when a change is indicated, find the assignable cause. So if you find something that is outside the control limits or if there's a trend that's not looking great, find out what's causing that and try and correct that. Eliminate or incorporate the cause. So if it's if it's something that's good, build it in, reestablish your limits, and re restart the revised process, and within the new limits, continue to track. So statistical process control can, can, can measure and evaluate both improvements and uh, uh, negative occurrences. So uh, again, here's, you know, uh, this is uh, missed free throws. Our coach's target is 10%. Uh, lower control limit is 0%. Uh, upper control limit is 20%. Uh, we can see here, you know, uh, people have good days or bad days. Could be the number of shots they're taking. Here is one where we've gone above 20% of misses. And in that circumstance, we should see, is there something going on here? Uh, why, why are we seeing those misses? So again, it gives us something to track. So there are a variety of tools that you can use in, in, in managing quality from simply collecting data with a checklist to brainstorming causes with a fishbone diagram to a, a simple histogram to look at distributions. Uh, all the way to the complexity of a statistical process control chart. All of them have a role to play in managing quality and all are things that we should, uh, that we should be thinking about. That's it for today. Thanks and have a good